Your AEW TDS champion, Chris Statlander, has arrived. Chris, how's your day going over there? Oh, it's not too bad. Uh, got a workout in, got yelled at by my dogs, and uh, that's about it. In terms of yelled at by your dogs, do you mean more in a sense of being serenaded by them, or was something going on where they looking at a squirrel? <laughs> uh, def- definitely not, not a sweet song. Uh, they okay. just like to yell until... I get up and then they just attack each other and then I'll let them out and then they'll still yell at me. So it's just never ending noise. It's it's like when you have those um chickens in the coop outside and that's kind of your your wake up call. <laughs> yeah. Uh, our oldest dog, she has like a an alarm internal alarm clock. So like every morning at like maybe 7 30, which like isn't super early for dogs, but every single morning it's 7 30, she'll get off the bed come right to my face and just start crying at me oh, and she won't stop until I let her outside at first it's the cutest thing in the world right and then after you when years go by you go oh my gosh this again I'm sure yeah I have her creeping right now staring at me oh well if there's any ever a puppy cameo they're always welcome <laughs> yeah it happens almost every single interview as I said, like, bring it on. That's what I'm all about here. But there's a yeah. lot to obviously dive into. Oh, hi, sweetheart. Um, with you being here on the show from your return to AEW, winning that TBS title, squatting in promos. But I would love to begin <laughs> with friendship as your friendship with the boys as best friends is awesome. It's been so fun to see and develop over time. So how fun is it for you having these best friends that you can coordinate super trippy intergalactic matching jumpsuits with? Uh, it's honestly so much fun. Um, I, I wish that I could have them out there with me for my matches like they used to do, but they're all very busy most of the time. So I understand why they can't do it, but, um, it's just always so much more fun having them around and getting to do things as a group together. Cause sometimes when you're by yourself, like you don't really have anyone to play off of and you can be a little awkward, especially me. I'm always very awkward trying to figure things out by myself but when I have them around it just feels so much more comfortable and they are truly truly like my best friends you can see the camaraderie because sometimes we know that teams are put together and it's just kind of a backstage thing and then once you don't have that light on or the red light you just go your separate ways but it seems so genuine amongst the four of you so it's really lovely to see yeah we always uh try and do as many like group outings and stuff together uh we are an actual like traveling friendship team together. So it's it's very nice to have that. Well, just kind of speaking of other teams that we recently saw come to life on AEW, you had one of the most ridiculous yet memorable backstage promos where you were squatting <laughs> uh, Renee Paquette. It was so fun yeah. to watch. So was that something you knew you were going to do going into that segment or did you kind of surprise everyone with it? I mean, I had... I, I had no idea what I was going to do because I was just told to kind of talk about the upcoming match with Mercedes Martinez on collision the next day. So I was just like, I don't really, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like I try to be a very serious person when I have my promos and that's just not who I am. Anyone that knows me that I'm like, it just, it's not right unless it's like super genuine. And I didn't really have a reason to like, I don't know. It just wasn't one of those promos that needed to be like, this is my whole world, my whole life type deal. Yeah. It was, I just needed to do something different and do something that was more me. So I obviously I asked Renee, I said, Hey, what do you think about this? And she was like, all right, let's do it. So, and then, uh, yeah, that was our second take of that promo. So we just had to make sure, you know, so I was very tired. <laughs> I was very, very tired doing that second take, but somehow I, uh, I got through it and uh, the people went nuts over it and everyone loved it. And I was like, all right, now I just gotta, I guess I just have to squat everyone that's interviewing me from now on. So I would, I would like to see if we were here in person, I would honestly expect it to be on. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For sure. How did you keep such a serious face? Cause you mentioned um, you love more of a serious promo. And of course it was something to build up the match the next day, but I just couldn't imagine being in that scenario and being able to spell everything so seriously the way that you did in that situation. I don't know. I, I, I it was just like, I don't know. I feel like not that I, like I, everyone knows that I did not grow up watching wrestling. I don't have a great like wrestling historian type brain, uh, but I know 
that the people that were helping film it and help me like find out what to say with it uh they were like that was like very like 80s style wrestling promo and it was one of their favorite uh-huh. promos ever while and I was like okay well that's why it just kind of felt like easy to do because it's like all those big crazy characters that you've seen like all like I don't know like Randy Savage and Hogan promos and stuff like that like it felt like I was almost just doing that and I was like why haven't I been doing this the whole time this is so much easier (laughs) so I guess I just kind of I channeled wrestling history that day I don't know but it just yeah sometimes you just go with it and then it just works so well of course, we've been talking about some current stuff that went on, but you are a proud graduate from Create a Pro Wrestling Academy on Long Island. Mm-hmm. Your image is actually on the Create a Pro Women's Championship title belt. And with your history yeah. there, hell yeah, it should be as you are the first female <laughs> cab graduate. Now there's a tournament being held to win this. And you seem so honored um, when you saw that your image mm-hmm. was actually on there. So I'd love to hear more about that excitement and just seeing all of these young prospects follow in these footsteps as well. Yeah, I just want to first off say that I'm so, so glad that there are more females that are like sticking through it finally. Um, Because Creative Pro was around for like maybe three years before I even joined. And then uh, the fact that I was the first one to ever officially graduate is such an honor. And I'm proud of myself for sticking through with something that I didn't really know what I was doing when I got into it. Um, And I remember uh, Brian Myers actually showed me the belts like a month or two before um they had announced the tournament and then all the girls that were are going to be involved in it they had no idea um about that so it was a surprise to everybody else but i i knew about it so i was just it's such such an honor and i honestly feel like it's more of an honor to be on the belt than for me to ever even win it um Mm -hmm. because i already had my chance and i had i made my legacy there of being the first female. And then I made it to AEW. And um, now that I'm on a belt and there's finally enough women that they can have a division and people look up to me, even though I'm just, you know, I'm still a student, I'm learning every single day. And the fact that there's people joining now because of me and wanting to get involved because of me, and now there's something of me that they can win. It's wild. And uh, yeah, it's, I, I don't think I could ever... I would never feel right challenging for that belt because it feels like it's almost like in dedication to me that it's selfish for me to even want it. And I, and I don't want it. I want everyone um, that's been training and working hard, trying to follow in my footsteps, I guess, to have that moment and to have something that they can achieve. It's always fun for me hearing people talk about CAP because there are so many people who have come out of there who are amazing talents from yourself, MJF, Max Caster. And I know that the boys still pop in once in a while. So is that something you also do? Because there you mentioned still studying, still training all the time. So I'm assuming uh, yeah. you might you might go in there once in a while to keep that up. Of course. Uh, I don't live in New York anymore. So I always make sure that when I do get the chance to go home and I am visiting my family that I at least show up to one day of training um and i and i do keep in pretty good contact with everyone still um but yeah i i wish i i think the the one thing that i miss about being at home in new york and being on long island is that i don't get to see all my creative pro family every single day like i used to and that's uh that's the biggest upset right now hold on the dog wants to leave the room what's the dog's name her name is harlot harlot oh Gosh, yeah, I, I've, that's right. right. That was the name given to her. It was it wasn't our choice, but she also responds to Snoot. So, Snoot is that one that you were able to bestow upon her? <laughs> yes, yeah, we we made her have that one. That's adorable. So, something else I wanted to discuss with you is how everyone was so excited to see her surprise return from injury to come back to take over Jade and, of course, win the TBS championship. And you've mentioned before how being away from wrestling while healing taught you a lot about yourself. So I was just curious, what are some of the best revelations or aha moments that you had within that time period? Uh what's what's weird is that being away I mean everyone always kind of feels the same thing about wrestling where being away from it makes you realize how much that you love it and how much it's become a part of your life um but I also 
I remember the first uh, ACL tear, I always felt like anytime I would show up and start doing some rehab with uh, the doctors and whatnot, that I felt like I was in the way and I was, you know, I like, I shouldn't be here right now. I should be at home and not bothering anybody. And then it, I, I never got over that feeling until I was able to return and like be a part of the show again. And then I felt like that at the beginning of um, my second one also, because I was like, I'm just screwing everything up for everybody. I'm ruining the plans. I'm in the way. And then I, I felt so much love from everyone that saw me there. Uh, even when I was injured, um, uh, because I kept showing up as much as I could. And I wanted to participate in like, uh, like not charity, but like the community outreach stuff that we would do and do meet and greets and whatnot. And I wanted to participate as much as possible. Um, and I think just realizing how much, not only that like wrestling and AEW has impacted me, but how much I mean to everybody there is like the biggest, the biggest thing that I uh, really discovered and how much everybody just like piled up backstage uh, when I made my return and I, uh, and I won the belt finally and just how many people were there and I had to hug like the entire roster and I was so grateful for everyone uh that supported me and wanted to see me succeed because not everybody uh gets that feeling and I am just so honored to know that I have made a positive impact on pretty much everyone everyone loves me <laughs> <laughs> that's so lovely to hear though because we see wins sometimes and I don't know I feel like it goes over people's heads or they don't appreciate as much but you could just see everything mm -hmm. sinking in uh, not to mention the crazy confetti that they had for you that was just wild and totally added to the moment but it's, yeah. it's just nice to hear the the behind the scenes aspect of of how much the camaraderie is there and the friendships and how it didn't mean something to just you but everyone in the back that's what you love to hear yeah. Yeah. And I, I wanted to be emotional in the ring, like when it happened and I couldn't do it. Like it just, I was, I think I was just so relieved to not screw anything up and make a fool of myself in my return that I was just like, oof, nailed it. Like, it's I done. Could, I could what was going on. But then when we were doing like the sit down interviews after like getting all like the road to stuff filmed and I was just thinking about how everyone supported me, I was like getting very emotional, uh, just realizing how much love there was for me to just have a moment like that. And then, and then I was emotional behind the scenes, but it was still on camera. So. <laughs> I never even thought of that aspect of being in there thinking, don't, don't screw this up. Don't re-injure something that must just Oof. as someone who doesn't, is, isn't an athlete. Like that's not something that occurs yeah. to me while I'm watching it. Yeah. Let me tell you on, um, I was like, okay, I knew I was, I was panicking. I have drinking caffeine all day giving myself a heart attack because I had nothing better to do while I was just sitting and waiting to get ready. And then um, I was trying to do like a different pose in my entrance. And then I walk out there and I do it and then I lose my balance. And I was like, Oh my God, Oh my God, Oh my God, everyone's going to know. Everyone's going to know. But then everything else was fine, but you, you can't really tell, but I, I was, I went a little too hard on my entrance and I was like, Oh my God, <laughs> oh, ruin everything. I would have thought that would be the thing that the takeaway that could have literally ruined everything wild yeah Oof. <laughs> <laughs> well the last thing I wanted to bring up with you today is I know you have such an eclectic taste in music as you love everything from musicals to rap to 80s tunes all over the map and I've noticed mm -hmm. you quoting a few different old school songs as captions <laughs> of course this new moniker of yours comes from one of the best 70s disco songs of all time which you use as an entrance mm -hmm. on the indies so with that right. said the final question for today being more than a woman, how many times a day does the Bee Gees tune get stuck in your head? Not so much anymore. It is on my like main playlist that I just like, this is the one. Uh, I don't know what to, I want to listen to. So I just put this playlist that I made of like all my all feel good songs. So that one is a regularly played track. But um, yeah, I don't know. I just love the vibe of like 80s music. They just like 80s love songs and like disco love songs and stuff. They just they just make you feel so good. They're just such a happy, a happy feeling. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know, there's just something about them, especially like when I'm sitting on an airplane and I'm just traveling. It's like almost like that music video. <laughs> like you have that. Oh, I'm doing it. I'm in a music video type thing. And you're just like, yeah, this is you just start daydreaming. And they're all like very easy to just kind of tune out and just 
get caught up in the music a little bit. And that's why I like them so much. They just make me feel good. And I'll listen to them while I work out. And people think that's weird, but it's all about feeling good. Those are my go-tos because they make you feel good. And disco is so mm-hmm. upbeat when you find those right tracks that they're perfect yeah. for working out. So couldn't agree more yeah. on that front. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, Chris, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time for catching up. We're so psyched to see you back in action, of course, every single week on AEW. So thank you for chilling today. Thank you for having me. Of course. To everyone watching, this has been Chris Statlander. Be sure to check out alicia2.com for plenty more exclusive interviews, features, and vlogs. And I will see you next time, everyone. Bye. We'll